Hi, everybody. I'm Maureen McGuigan, Deputy Director of Arts and Culture for Lackawanna County. Uh, welcome to Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Live, uh, where we are bringing you virtual seasonal programming. Today, we're going to see a festive presentation on Kwanzaa by Rashida Lovely and the youth from New Wave Studios. Uh, Rashida is the director of New Wave Studios, located in Scranton, that provides a variety of youth programming in disciplines such as dance, visual arts, science, and technology. So welcome, Rashida. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have you on our uh, Lackawanna Arts and Culture Live Holiday Edition. Uh, you're a great community leader. Um, as I mentioned in my introduction, you are the director of New Wave Studio, which has just been doing amazing things here in Scranton. What I'm impressed is, is a, you're a true Renaissance woman. You have dance, uh, visual arts, but science and technology. So why don't we start off with you telling us a little bit more about this studio and um, what kind of things you do there and what you've been doing in Scranton? Okay, so um, I opened New Wave Studios in 2015. Um, part-time for the first couple of years um, and I solely taught um, dance and uh, illustrative art um, mm -hmm. but I had noticed that the kids who were coming in for classes were struggling a bit in school work so we started a tutoring program an hour before dance class um, and so we did that for about a year and then I said okay well maybe we can introduce a science um, part of, of the studio uh, this way the kids can get what they need as far as their education and still have fun with dance and illustrative art. Um, so we started uh, the summer STEAM program. Um, we usually teach roughly between 20 and 35 kids. Um, and the hours usually particularly run like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and once we uh, developed the program, we started bringing in people from industry. So we didn't necessarily have like certified teachers, but we would bring in chemists and engineers and they would teach, help teach the courses over the summer. Wow, that's really exciting. Uh, and you're located right now in West Brampton? Is that where the studio is today? Yes. So yes, uh, last year we moved from, I used to be on Wyoming Avenue in downtown area. And then I moved to Jackson Street uh, just um, last year. Um, but we've been in the middle of renovations and things like that. And then COVID, of course. Yeah. So everything's been a slow go. But yeah, so we're okay. here now. That's great. And if people uh, want to get in touch with you or find information about more about your programs, where's the best uh, place for them to go? So the best place to go is our website, and that's newwavestudios.com, um, N-E-W-A-V-E studios.com. So one W, a lot of people get that confused. Yeah. Um, and we list, um, we try to keep it pretty much up to date with all the, the latest programs that we offer. And we also keep an archive of all of the programs that we did years prior. So you can actually see what we did for the summer STEAM programs from a few years back. Um, also, you can see what we've done as far as like community events and things like that. Um, so there's a plethora of information on the website. So I tell everybody, go there so you can kind of see a little bit of all we do. And, you know, one question, what, what has motivated you to dedicate your life to this? And what, what you know, how did this emerge? If, if you could tell our viewers a little bit about that. Um, sure. So um, I'm actually a transplant. I'm from the New York, New Jersey area. We like um, it. And, <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> we like the yeah, so, so and, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, that's great that you're bringing your talent and expertise here. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, so th there's so many programs there when I was growing up. And I thought when we moved here, I didn't see as many programs being offered. And again, this is like 10 years ago. So there's more programs now that are available, but um, all those years passed, it, it was very sparse. So I had decided that the kids who were here who couldn't afford the expensive programs, they would be the ones that I would target or focus on. Um, and so my program has been dedicated to the kids who are underprivileged, um, who don't, who families don't have the financial means, but who, who should have the same opportunities to have the same quality programs as other families. Yeah, that's, you're 
so true. We, we support that at, too at the Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Department. We, we love that. So um, I know in your, your presentation, which is going to be a mix of visual arts and performance about Kwanzaa, you're going to talk a lot more about the holiday, but can you just give us maybe a little bit of overview and talk about some of the events that you've done and, and maybe we'll do this year depending on COVID celebrating Kwanzaa? Um, yeah, so we typically do a one day event for Kwanzaa every year. It usually falls on a Sunday and we do like a vendor's day thing. So we have arts and crafts and dance. We usually have performers. Um, lots of artists come in from out of state, usually from New York. Sometimes they come from Philadelphia and as far away as Maryland and Virginia. Um, so we, we get a very large mix. Um, but we, we, for the most part, we try to keep it as local as possible whenever possible. Um, so this year, what's going to be different from the previous years is that we're going to have a week-long event. Um, so as you know, Kwanzaa is a week, a week long. So we're going to have a celebration every single day of Kwanzaa. Um, so some of the things that we're going to do or we're planning to do besides having the Vendor's Day is we're going to have a town hall with um, an economist, um, Dr. Malcolm Adams. He'll be joining us to talk about um, uh, economics, um, community economics, um, and um, that's going to be open to the community. Um, we'll also have another speaker who's going to discuss health and fitness. Um, and when we close out the event, we're going to have a local pastor come in and kind of give us a spiritual closing because um, we want to have a very even though we want to have fun, you have to have a well-rounded program, right? Um, so we're going to try to make sure that we cover every day and focus on which, what each day means. Um, and then we want to make sure that the community can also participate and learn, not just about what Kwanzaa means, but also how it impacts them. That's really beautiful. Um... Well, it, so Kwanzaa is December 26th officially, but you said it, like you said, it is a week long celebration that I think there's a, right, there's a symbol for each day. I'm sure you're going to talk about that more in your presentation, but it sounds like some of your activities tie into those beliefs and philosophies and values uh, of the holiday. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. And it's, it's not in competition with Christmas or anything like that. It's, it's, it's just mostly about a coming together of community. Um, kind of spending your dollars within the culture, within the community. Um, also, not being too focused on materialism, if that kind of makes sense. You know, we're looking more towards homemade items, you know, things that people can kind of do at home, not focus too much on things that are expensive and don't really mean as much. That's so beautiful. Um, I love that aspect of the holiday. It makes, and, and it's universal. One of the things that we celebrate at my department is culture and traditions. And there's so many more similarities and differences, but, uh, but each one is unique. So we learn something and we experience something different. So, so that's really wonderful uh, that you're bringing the community together through this tradition. Well, we're looking forward to seeing uh, the presentation and the dance and the visual arts table and learning more about this lovely holiday. And please keep us posted, if, if, you know, about the event as it gets closer. And um, really lovely to talk to you, Rashida. And uh, thank you for all you do. Hi, my name is Rashida Lovely, and I'm the owner of New Wave Studios, located here in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And today, I'm so excited to talk to you about a seven-day celebration called Kwanzaa. So let's explain what Kwanzaa represents and what Kwanzaa is. So Kwanzaa was founded in 1966 by Dr. Milano Karenga in California. He thought that African Americans should engage in celebrations that focused on unity, community, and self-reliance, which is reinforced by this kinara, which is a seven candle holder. And each day you light the candles to reinforce the principles that are a part of the Kwanzaa meaning. Kwanzaa is a blend of different African cultures, rituals, and even languages. So now we will discuss how we like the Kinara for every day. And here is the Kinara 
and the seven candles that represents the seven principles. The first day of Kwanzaa is unity or umoja, and it is represented by this black candle that must be lit on the very first day. It symbolizes the beginning of Kwanzaa and its celebration. The focus is on the coming together of community, of family. The second day of Kwanzaa is called self-determination or Kuji Gajulia. And you must light the first candle that's in the center and then the furthest most red candle. This represents our need for perseverance, no matter what the situation may bring. We have to refocus and recenter our lives and to keep pushing forward, no matter what the circumstance. The third day of Kwanzaa is collective work and responsibility, or Ujima. You must light the first candle in the center, the furthest most red candle, and then the furthest most green candle. The focus is on the coming together and working as a community. This could mean many different things, the coming together of resources and of labor. And also there is a focus on responsibility, responsibility for oneself and responsibility for the greater community. Also, on the third day of Kwanzaa, you must pour juice into a cup and fill it to the brim. Then you must partake of this cup along with any other participants. This is a filling of the spirit, a filling of the mind. It's as if you're saying, my cup has runneth over and I am partaking of it. On the fourth day, it's called Cooperative Economics or Ujama. So you must light the center candle, the furthest most red candle, the furthest most green candle. Then you come back to the center red candle. Cooperative Economics is the coming together of financial resources. It is to combine resources for the greater good of the community. So this may not necessarily mean labor, but it can mean financial resources. The fifth day of Kwanzaa is cooperative purpose or Nia. So you light the center candle, the outermost red candle, the outermost green candle, the center red candle, then the center green candle. Cooperative purpose means the coming of together, the coming together of ideas and having a general purpose for the community and the group as a whole. The sixth day of Kwanzaa is creativity or Koumba. So as you have seen earlier, you light the first center candle, the outermost red candle, the outermost green candle, the center red candle, the center green candle, then the end red candle. Koumba represents the creative spirit and mind the focus is on art, music, and all things that are considered creative. And last but not least, our seventh day is faith or imani. So you light the centermost candle, the outer red candle, the outer green candle, 
the center red candle, the center green candle, the last red candle, and finally the last green candle. Even though it is the last day, it is considered vitally important. And that is because without spirituality or faith, many of these other qualities or principles won't mean as much. Faith and spirituality is important to any group and to any individual. So it must be emphasized and focused on, on the last day and beginning of the new year. So along with the lighting of the Kinara, there are many ways that African Americans across the United States celebrate Kwanzaa. Some participate in dance, some come together with food, and also crafts, handmade crafts that we share amongst one another. Kwanzaa is a celebrating of the coming together to focus on family and community. I'm sure you've heard the, the term, it takes a village. This focus is reinforced at the end of every year. And it's to keep us grounded in understanding what is most important. Our priorities should always be our sense of centeredness, our family, and also, and most important, our community as a whole. So now I would like to show you what we have prepared for our Kwanzaa celebration. We have some dance and music we'd like to showcase for you. I hope you enjoy.
Wow, did you notice the amazing dances that the girls were doing? And did you notice the beautiful and rich patterns that they were wearing on their tops and their headpieces? Those patterns are called kente, and it's just one of the many rich cultural additions that belong to the Kwanzaa celebration. I hope that today you learn what Kwanzaa means and how we prepare our rituals. And also, December 27th, which is a Sunday, we will be having our Kwanzaa celebration from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please come join us and have a taste of our different foods and crafts and music and dance. But we will be COVID ready, so please bring your mask. So from the New Way family to your family, happy Kwanzaa. Thanks everybody for watching Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Live Holiday Edition. Hope you enjoyed this nice presentation on Kwanzaa by Rashida Lovely and her students. Uh, I think it was very meaningful and hopefully we can carry some of those symbols and ideas into 2021. Uh, please stay safe, healthy, and happy holidays.